quite a nice morning view. Got up a little later than we'd hoped. But it is beautiful. I just finished my stretching. And Henry is right through there, drying out the tent. We're gonna go fold it up in a minute. What a sight! Quite beautiful. Not sure what time we'll see the sun today. Probably even later than we did yesterday, but thankfully we did not start hiking while it was still dark. So, uh, even though it's later, we won't be deprived of the sun for as many hours. All right, not so bad. 7.57 and we've hit sunlight. Even earlier than yesterday, despite my uh, suspicions that it would be later. That's really nice. Henry will be happy. His foot went for a dunk when he was doing the river crossing. Um, and so I think he'll be really excited to be able to maybe warm up his foot a little bit. All right, preparing for the second ford of the day. This lady coming the other way because it was very cold. Here we go. All right, that wasn't too bad. It was cold, um, as pretty much all of them are. But uh, when I first looked at it, it looked like it was going to be super deep where the crossing was. And then I found that more shallow spot that it was, I was a little worried it was going to be too slippery. Um, but the shallow spot was not slippery at all, so I went right across and it was great. And unfortunately, I'm oh, sorry, I'm like doing two things at once, it's getting all crooked. Uh, we didn't think to leave me one of the Sean towels when Henry hung back a little. So I am improvising and using my extra pair of socks to dry my feet off and get back on the trail. I wonder if these are the same genus, but a different species as this one that we've been seeing all throughout Washington and Oregon. The reason I say that is these point up, the other ones point down, but they're unmistakably uh, very similar. After reading that flower book in the uh, lodge type building at Tuolumne Meadows, I uh, realized that there's a lot of no I don't know about flowers. So we had a classic, uh, so Pamela got stuck in the middle of the river. She very expertly took off her shoes and socks while standing on this rock with her pack on uh, and threw them to me. But then she, she decided to throw the last shoe herself. It was a classic uh, late release situation where it went way too high and hit the bank and bounced back in. <laughs> but thankfully it got caught in that eddy there in that eddy current so it was just circulating so i fished it out with my pole yeah a real uh, real situation it's a cool view of the two lakes so actually two separate lakes separated by quite a bit of elevation and distance but it almost looks as if they're one right now very very cool we're almost to the top of the pass this water is so turquoise, it's beautiful. Welcome to another episode of Peak Bagging with Hank Lather. One moment. The show where Hank Lather bags in consequential peaks. This one's more of a nubbin. And we'll see. All right, Henry just scrambled up there, so he's up at the top. What? Hi. All right, made it up to this nubbin. It's really more like the beginning of a ridge line, but it's super fun. And you get a really good view. So that's ridge line there. Very pokey. That's where we came from. All those chains of lakes. Mathers up that valley. That's Pincho down there with those people. And then this is where we're going. So I was coming down from that nubbin. I saw a guy scrambling up, which I believe would mean this is the first 
instance I know of that peak bagging with Hank Lather has inspired someone else to bag, quote unquote, a peak. It's a first for the program. All right, Pamela, stop for a second. It's time to dispense the Nerd Balls achievement points. Yay! That, was, that was a two, two, uh, two NBAT pass. It's NBAT for short. So please take four, because you still need two from Mather. Okay. And I'll take two. One, two, three, four. And one, two for you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Mmm. Mm. So good. Let's see if Henry can make it through better than I did. Almost every single one of those rocks is unstable, which makes it very challenging. And then the last step is just really big. So I kind of tried to jump and didn't make it, but so far so good. Oh, nice. Good job, Water babe. Legs. We just crossed over that little creek and entered this jungle. Very cool. Also this water, this river that we're following, it's just like so clear, turquoise. It's beautiful. This is the Woods Creek water slide. People talk like it's doable. Maybe it's just a little bit further down that's doable. I don't know. Looks insane. I think most people are joking. It sounds like some people have done it. We are 0.04 away on Gaia, so maybe it'll become more apparent. Yep, we're at the Icon. Maybe it's a thing you do in lower water years. <laughs> that looks insane. I'm gonna go for a closer look. There is a pool. Wow. This has gotta be a lower water thing year. But still insane. There's the pool. And there's your run out. Wow, this bridge is so cool. All right, I'm gonna go up it, cross over this rock thing. And then we've got the graded stairs here. We're going up, 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 up. Ooh, it's a little stressful actually. Didn't anticipate that. All right, we're gonna put the phone away. It's starting to move. What's happening? Is it an earthquake? No, it's Pamela. That's a nice touch. There's the bridge. Right. Yeah, that was a little stressful. I'm not big into heights, things that move around when I'm high up, things that I can see through when I'm high up, etc., etc. But it got better the longer it went on. And here comes Henry. It gets, you can see, it gets like very wiggly. It's actually kind of fun how wiggly it gets. Uh, by the end, at least, I thought it was kind of fun. But uh, yeah, pretty cool bridge. I would think I would have seen a picture of this before, but I don't think I have. Whoa, it really moves side to side. Wow. And I'll show you here, there's like this big mountain behind it, which is also very cool. This looks like a wonderful place to take a dip. It's a tributary maybe of that big one. Looks really deep, but sorry fishies. I'm coming in. That was absolutely amazing. I'm gonna walk down. The bank is undercut by a huge amount. Very cool. I wanna show show that so I'm going back down. Okay, this is gonna require me to climb back in the stream, but it wasn't that deep here. Look 
Look at that. It's so far under there. Multiple feet. That's where the little fishies are. Wow, that's so cool. There's the bridge. So you're out here in the back country and you don't need your shorts or your under any and underwear anymore. What do you do? Oh, just chuck them in a fire pit. I'll take care of it. What? Why? Okay, so this is an avalanche section. Apparently it gets worse than this. We received some very detailed instructions from some no bows, uh, Pamela did, about where to go up. So we think it's around here. So we're gonna go up this ridge and kind of try to stay above it is what we were cautioned to do. I know it doesn't look that bad right here. We also talked to another no hope nobo who was uh, completely unhelpful. He just kind of fear mongered. Then we'll love that. Um, you can't keep just saying, I don't know. Anyway, okay, well, we'll see how this goes. I think we got a little impatient. Left trail a little early. We'll see. Well, we ended up on the high, high route. There's all the avalanche tree and stuff down in the trail. And there just looks like a lot more even over there. This is quite a situation. So that's the first part of avalanche there. And then you can see the trail a little bit. Like right, where is it? Over there? There it is. And then there's more avalanche. And Henry sees people, so that's good. We had to scramble up this thing and now we're going across this semi ridge. We're almost there. And cut back down to the trail. Okay, you can see we're very still clearly in the avalanche section, but we made it uh, through the worst of it. It was about uh, 0.3 miles off trail we did. Pamela led us, she did a great job, and on our way. These trees are pretty crazy. They're pretty spaced out. They're very nice. I love them. Also, those guys that were going the other direction when we were navigating the avalanche, they had the smallest packs I've ever seen. I actually asked them if they were through hikers because they didn't know. They looked like, as Pamela put it, trail runners who decided to pack a lot of extra stuff in case of emergency. Their packs didn't have hip belts. And anyway, then we got closer and there was just something about them. They, their eyes were just wild. They were this piercing blue and just, there's just a wildness in them. And I, they're actually GMT hikers. I ask them, because my second guess was PCT hikers. Um, although with packs like that, they probably would have finished already. Um, and then I wish I would have asked them uh, how many miles a day they're doing, because Pam and I were talking about this and we're like, they're doing at least 30 or 40 miles. Um, and then Pamela had the good sense to ask, do you have bear cans? Because there's no way it, like, their pack was basically the size of our bear can. And he, uh, he said, we hang our bay, we hang our food in trees and winked and walked away. It was wild. We don't condone that. Pretty sure that's not legal. But, uh, those guys were wild. Those eyes, it was crazy. Wow, it's beautiful. We have just about a little more than half a mile to camp. Henry, do you know what lake this is? What's that? Oh, sorry, do you know what lake this is? Uh, Dollar, is Dollar? Lake. Yep. Dollar Lake. We have 0.7 miles to camp. Yeah, it's exciting. It's a lovely sunset. Woo, doggy. That is nice, and the reflection in the water. Wow. It is beautiful. I just cannot get over how beautiful this is. I just, I love this like marshy grass. And that big tall thing, don't know what that is, but love it. Unfortunately, looking at this.
Poor Pamela, this is her fifth Ford of the day. I'm over it. Yeah, sorry. It's all right. All right, I am so close to having eaten one pound of peanut butter today, but I just can't do it, having couscous. I'm so close. Henry's socks are out of control. <laughs> Literally, look at these holes. They're like... They rip more every time I put them on. They're like the size of a plum. It's ridiculous. Plum-sized holes. He finally started using his, um, his sleeping socks, or his extra pair of socks slash sleeping socks for the daytime, because I was just like, these are ridiculous. And they're now also, he uses these to sleep in. They're also, um, heavier. Heavier. I don't know if that's just because he's been worn down. I tried to. I thought I bought mid weights, but uh, well, I mean, you're welcome to wear these hiking shoes. Like more uh, felt like they were just gonna keep getting more ripped up. But hmm. anyway, those will be being mailed back to Darn Tough at some point. Those are beautiful. You wanna show us those? Nice. Art. Look at that. That is art. 